Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Techie, and in this video we're gonna learn about PHP form handling. And we're gonna look at the difference between the post and get methods. Okay, I'm gonna start a new project in NetBeans. I'm gonna name this project PHP form handling. And I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to the folder where I'm gonna be storing the source files. And click finish to create the project. Next, I'm going to create a new file and name the file index.php. And then I'm just going to create a basic HTML template, PHP form handling, and create a basic HTML form. I'm going to leave action blank because we're going to be submitting the form to itself. And for the first input type, I'm going to say text. I'm going to name it first name. And I'm gonna leave value blank. Text for the second one, last name, and leave the value blank. I'm also gonna go ahead and add the input type equals submit. Have our submit button. Let's also go ahead and add labels. First name, last name and enclose the input fields inside the paragraph tags to make it look a little bit better. All right, so now let's get to the PHP part. I'm gonna go to OneNote and copy this uh, pre-R function to print the arrays in a more readable format. And uh, now here's what I wanna do. Since the form is gonna be submitting to itself, we can put the PHP code right above of it. And that's the script that's gonna be run when the form is submitted. And since the method of the form is post, we wanna capture this post global variable. And if I do, if I print out this global array here, you can see what it looks like. So let's go back to the browser. And right now you can see the array, the post array is being printed out, but it's empty. So I can just enter my first and last name, hit submit, and now you can see what's inside of the post array. So you can see that the first name uh, is of the input type text with a value clever techie. So this is the actual associative array key of the post variable, which became the value clever for the first name and the last name as well. And so you can see how these variables are being passed to the post. So whenever creating an input field, you can think of it as uh, creating a variable. And, uh, and you name your variable here by specifying the value for the name. And then the value for the variable goes here. And it's empty here because we're asking the user to enter this variable value in our text input field. So I just wanted to clarify that. All right, so now let's go ahead and test to see if the form has been submitted by checking for the submit variable. So all we gotta do is say if is set post submit. So all we're saying here, if, if this variable is set, and if it exists inside the post global array, then we know the form has been submitted. Post form has been submitted. So now that we know the form has been submitted, we can start doing whatever else we need to do inside of the if statement. So we can, for example, print out the first name and last name. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're gonna use the actual post array to print out the first name. Gonna add the br tag here at the end and also the last name as well. Post last name, br tag. Okay, so if everything goes well, we should see the first and last name being printed out when the form is submitted. Submit the form and as you can see, 
PHP checked that the form has been submitted and then it printed out the values of first name and last name of the post variable on the page. Okay, so that's how we use method equals post and post global array to get the values from the input text field and work with them and print them out and do whatever we want. Now let me show you how method get works. Okay, so all we have to do is change this to get and then we're also going to print it out using pre r pre r get. Okay, so as you can see, it's still printing out our old values, so I'm going to refresh the page and then enter my first and last name, hit submit. And as you can see, the post array is now empty and get array is being printed out like it should be. Also, you may notice here in the URL, our variables are not visible. So it says first name equals Vladimir and last name equals Shustikov and submit equals submit. So whenever we're using get, they're going to be passed inside of this URL. So this is going to be the actual variable name and this is going to be its value. And they're going to be separated with an ampersand. And all the variables are going to be here visible in the URL when using the get method. So now we can do the same thing with get. We can just check if the button has been submitted and then change this to get and this as well. So you can see that's still working. And if I refresh the page, enter my first and last name again, hit submit. And as you can see, everything is working just like expected and the variables are being shown inside the URL. So one of the differences between get and post is that the get variables are being shown in the URL and that's how get variables are always going to be passed using the get method. On the other hand, submit variables are not going to be visible inside of the URL and they are submitted directly to the server for processing. So that's how post and get works. And the last thing I want to show you guys is a global array called request. And the request just contains both values of post and get so we can use whichever one we want. So if the method here is get, the request is going to have these uh, same variables that get has. Okay, let's go ahead and test this out. Hit submit and as you can see the request has these variables and values. The post is empty right now. But now let's go ahead and change our method to post. Now let's see what happens. Hit submit. The request is still being printed out with the same values as the post. So those are all the three methods, post, get and request. And let's just go ahead and add some more stuff here just for fun. I'm going to say, since we're inside the post submit, we can say the form is using post method. Else if is set get submit. The form is using get method. And then I'm going to copy this part, paste it here, and change this to get. Now we can also go ahead and add the br tag here. Okay, the form is using the post method, the request and post has been printed, and then we need to just change this to get. And now the form is using get method and the get is being printed out along with the request. Okay, so another thing I wanted to show you guys is let's go ahead and cut this part out and create a new file. And we're just going to include this file from our index page. And we can call this new file process.php. And it's usually a good idea to put PHP code in a separate file from the HTML just to keep things organized. So here we can just say require once 
process.php to include the file and then that way everything looks a lot cleaner and more organized and we're still gonna be getting the same exact result so so you can see that everything is still working exactly the same and I just wanted to show you guys one more thing here I wanted to show you how to use input field type hidden so this is a field that's gonna be invisible to the user and we can still have a name for it and a value so it's gonna be like a hidden secret hidden variable so if I view this page now nothing is showing up here but watch what happens when we submit the form using the get method you can see that the hidden variable is now showing up inside of the URL uh, along with its value so that's how we can use a hidden input field to pass more values to our form for processing now let's see what happens when we use post instead of get and as you can see we still have our hidden variable with its value but it's not showing up inside of the URL so if you don't want the user to see the hidden variable in the URL it's better to use the post method and that's it for this video on how get post and form handling works in PHP and if you guys found this video useful please like share and subscribe and I'll see you next time clever techie out